start right at the top with Mark Pope and what happened right. at Rupp Arena on Sunday. I was there. I, you know, I expected six to eight thousand, maybe. That's what you told me I, in the beginning. I think that's what UK <laughs> expected because the configuration just basically assumed that half the arena would be empty. Jeff Shepard told me, he said, I I was just wondering how they were going to arrange all the seating to make Rupp Arena look full for this thing. It was full, and they turned away. UK says this morning close to 5,000 people who couldn't get in. That's an amazing show of force, and Mark Pope obviously uh, knocked it out of the park. Coaches usually do on that first speech. He said a lot of things that resonated, but obviously, Rick, his presence resonates at the at Kentucky. Now, where does he go to start to get players? Well, I mean, he obviously goes to the portal. He tries to keep a few of the guys he has. We'll get to that in a little bit when we talk about um, yeah. Reed Shepard. But uh, portal first, recruiting some. You know, he's got to get a staff in place. He's got a lot to do. But I got to give him credit. I mean, let's remember on Thursday night yeah. or Friday, whenever this brought negativity, yeah. uh, social media was in meltdown mode, saying that they settled and that Mitch Barnhart panicked and everything else. Um, didn't look that way. It looked like Kentucky fans, as you wrote masterfully in a column, were ready to kind of take control of their program again and have the program be more of a reflection of the way they wanted it to be, more of a focus on winning SEC championships, winning national championships instead of the NBA draft, possibly going to the Maui Invitational, possibly playing Rick Pitino, having guys happy to wear the jersey. Uh, you know, it's honeymoon period. Everybody will talk about that until he loses a game he's not supposed to lose or he loses a big recruit to somebody. But I thought Mark Pope did a terrific job. Yeah, there, there certainly were more people there than would have been there to watch Scott Drew. I the think so. Thing. Yeah, and, you're right. And this this press conference was a risk for Kentucky because if there are just six or eight thousand people in Rupp Arena, it looks really empty. It's not. That's a huge turnout for a coach, but to have it in a place that big and then to fill it, I think that really uh, probably blew everybody's expectations out of the water. And that that's the easy way to exceed expectations. Uh, counting on Kentucky fans to react in a big way, I think it just shows you that. Uh, you know, the feelings about John Calipari and about the way the program was, uh, people were ready for the change. And I, I, even more than I think we gave it that credit for, and we knew they were ready for a change. They're just so tired of hearing about, you know, about draft day being the biggest day in program <laughs> history. The Kentucky basketball calendar changed yesterday. That is no longer the number one day in Kentucky basketball history. And Mark Pope said that pretty explicitly. It's, it's, he said it's a great honor to wear this jersey, not to just treat it as clothing, but to make, act like it means something. It meant something to him, meant something to the 40 plus former players who were there. Obviously means a lot to the fans. Pretty impressive show. Yeah, I mean, they were tired of the whole Cal shtick, as you and I have been for a number of years. I, I never thought NBA draft night was bigger than than NCAA tournament selection Sunday, SEC tournament, all of those things yeah. I thought were ridiculous. And thankfully, we have a coach who agrees with the way it should be. Yeah, right? yeah, should be fun to watch. You can catch every episode of Overtime on WDRB+. Plus. Download the app on your phone or TV today.